just when you finish up a big feature, invite your sources to become connections on LinkedIn. Somebody asked me earlier, I gave this session earlier because somebody else uh, didn't, didn't show. Somebody asked me earlier why she would do that because she, you know, she had her contact list on her computer or her Rolodex or whatever. One reason is that if you're connected to somebody and they change jobs and all their contact information changes, then you're still connected to them and you still have a way of reaching them and you may get their new contact information through this service. Also, in some cases, people have gotten stories out of the fact that somebody updated their LinkedIn profile that they've changed jobs before it's been publicly announced. So if it's a prominent person, that itself could be a news story. I understand uh, somebody got a story out of the fact that, that Hewlett Packard was killing off one of its product lines because they were alert enough to notice that all the people associated with that division had just been reassigned. Again, before it was, was officially announced. But I, I attended a, a session of the Defense Information Systems Agency at one point where they were cautioning people about how much information you're public, publishing on social media and how you know, the enemy could be profiling. Well, you guys, you guys are the enemy for a lot of people, and you want to be profiled. Flesh out your own profile so that you look credible. So you don't want to be sending that that message, either the in-mail, the introduction, or the, the invitation to connect, and not have a profile picture up there. To only have a couple of lines of description, to only have your current job listing and none of your job history. And on the other hand, if you have recommendations saying that you know, Dave is a tough but fair reporter, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing that, that, that maybe encourages people that they do want to talk to you. There are also LinkedIn groups on you know, any subject that are affinity groups, professional interest groups. I know there, there are things that are on different uh, government topics as well. If you join these groups, you can be posting questions, getting involved in discussions. You may discover connections that way. Also, under LinkedIn's ground rules, if you send an invitation to somebody who is, I think it's three, three or more steps away from you, they will sometimes prompt you to enter that person's email address. So in other words, they're challenging you to show that you already know this person. But if you have a group connection in common, that is a way of, of expediting that connection. So you're saying, because we are both members of the future social media group, I would like you to join my professional network. So I don't think I've covered this. Um, there, there is sort of a boilerplate note that, that LinkedIn generates that says, I would like you to be part of my professional network. Signed, David Carr. I encourage you to customize that a little bit. Take, take, a, take a minute longer and say, you were such a great help on that last story. <laughs> I would like to stay in touch with you. Give people some context, particularly if you forgot to do it right after you finished the story and now it's two months later and maybe they forgot where they're supposed to know you from. So you're, you're reminding them, giving them context. And there are also a number through the groups, and there's also uh, a section called LinkedIn questions, or LinkedIn answers, I think it is, where you can either pose questions, and try and get people to answer them, which might be a source of stories, or you might have people asking questions where you can step in and be the authority and say, you know, I answered that in this great story, and here's the link share it with all your friends.